Club de Certainly hope that nobody's dropped the beer glass today. One minute now for Gilbert. One minute for the race leader and the Belgian champion. Sagan last year's with the current world champion. For once, is looking tired. They are all hurting, aren't they? They are looking tired, and Trentin is holding on. He's just got to get himself over the top of this climb. And there's still the Paterberg to go. He's the last bearing, and Sagan trying to accelerate. Sagan is trying to accelerate on the... Yep, this is a real movement. This is a real movement from Sagan, and this is the danger point. He's got two bikes up ahead of him, he's seen that. And Sagan is there, with Van Avermaet coming with him, Narsen on the wheel as well. Van Baal on the left-hand side in the green, he's struggling to hold the wheel. Yep, Van Baal is... Oh! oh! Sagan is down! No! Sagan is down, taking Van Avermaet with him. Narsen's there, and that could be it. That could be it for Gilbert. Narsen is down injured, Sagan's out of the race. Goodbye to Van Avermaet as well. Drama on the old Aquaramont. Het meting is nu de eerste achtervolger na de ongelukkige valpartij vooraan. Nog op gedaan shit malheureus. De punt op 12 en 48 à 50 seconden. 48 volt niet op 50 seconden. Here it is. Is it hanging over? There's a coat. There you yeah. go. Picks it up on his handlebars. No. Well, thankfully, it, it's allayed my first fear. When I saw them in the centre of the road there, you just wonder. seconds behind these this trio let's not forget that although everyone's had a bit hard day today the trio ooh, one of the bogus oh oh down can't quite see who one of the bogus star men but which and who is it we're waiting to see the cameras unfortunately just sailing by we're blinded i'm afraid screened by those trees just for now i think it's i think, I it, think might it might be. be quintana i think it is so quintana gets a bike swap Oh my goodness, bike swap at a crucial moment, and he's a hard man to match, quite frankly. It's a big moment in the race, this. Quintana takes a bump, and it's Rojas that hands his bike to uh, Quintana, who got out of shape, shows you down. Anything can happen at any time. Safest place to be out front. And look at this, uh, 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 Dumoulin says, knock it off, knock it off. I don't want to win it like this. And the pace is, uh, he's waiting for him. That's uh, a gentleman at work. Grit over to the side. Look at this, here we go. Bang! Well, I've seen Quintana go down almost exactly the same during the time trial, but there he is, Nero Quintana gets a bike swap, and they're waiting up for him, Dan. Uh, well, that is going to swing things in the favour of the breakaway, because as you can see, Tom de Milan being extremely fair, given that was a purely a race incident, and saying, let's wait up for Nairo Quintana. He doesn't have to do this. Uh, Quintana didn't wait up when there was an incident up to Blockhouse, so he's lucky that uh, Quintana's just left his bike there, and Rojas is getting a spare bike himself, but he's going to have to do another... Oh, oh, what a place to stop, in fact. Terrible, terrible, and they're hampering other riders here. That's a silly, silly place to stop, because there was a, a more vacant spot just before uh, don't forget the uh, the camera just not showing it you but there was a place that vehicle could have parked up that was a bit of silliness and in fact that was bajicked off i think that just uh, tagged the back of the car drama here then 55 seconds back to the tom dumoulin group that have decided to ease the pace of that incline it was the pace that caused the accident though dan uh, part of it, you know, they were already attacking, let's put it that way. So there is Quintana back on somebody else's bike. I suspect he may well be waiting for his own service in a few moments' time, but will be more than grateful as he gets back onto the back of this group. And I imagine we'll offer up some thanks to Tom Dumoulin. Now, I wonder if that's something that Tom Dumoulin might live to regret if he gets attacked royally in the mountains to come. Well, two-minute advantage. Ooh. Oh, Dumoulin stopped, and he's going to do a bike change. He's going to do a bike change, I believe. And, in fact, uh, what's he up to? He's stripping off here as well. He's taking off the pink jersey. Oh, he's got a bad stomach. He's gone. No, I'm afraid. Oh, no. That is Tom Dumoulin, who I'm afraid is... Uh, has gone for, uh, well, he's got a bad stomach, let's put it that way, shall we? He's had to strip off at the side of the road, and uh, the commissaires on the race radio as well will see what the response is from Quintana and the Quintana group. 
I expect that gap will probably effect on him anyway. Is this the day where Tom Dumoulin says goodbye to the pink jersey? It certainly looks that way, I'm afraid, because the weakness he'll have, he's still going to carry himself, even if they wait for him down, he, he's got to carry himself back over this mountain. He's, uh, he's evacuated himself, let's put it that way, to spare your blushes, and he'll try and get back in right now, but this will be a forlorn uh, Tom de Milan right now, and I hope for his sake he can get back into a group that must be down the road. And here's Quintana, there's no let-up for the time being in these guys. Well, what a way to potentially lose the pink jersey at the Giro d'Italia. Let's not forget, though, all is not lost for Tom de Milan if it's just a bad stomach in his leg. And that's usually much later on here. This Sakharin is having a dig. Decided uh, to push on for Katusha. Uh, 29 seconds then to Amador at the moment, who's the chaser. And Zakharin is clean shaven these days, who decides to push on and have a go. And I'm afraid this looks terrible for Tom de Milan. That was why he went back to the car a little bit early on. He's looking for gels. He needs sustenance. He needs something to just help him through the rest of the day. And he's shaking his head. And I think that is uh, a message to everybody. Sabatini leads out, and he, it's actually the Bora Hands Grower rider who he leads out. He swings off, and here, ordinarily, Ackerman, I would have said, has got the win, but because of that headwind, he just slows down, he backs off. Demar comes from the left-hand side, can't quite get there. Gaviria was on the wheel. Again, didn't quite have enough road, but he knows he's coming, but it's Viviani, all about the Italian champion. Well, is he off the back? Was he delayed? What's going on here? Primus Roglic, second overall, uh, finding himself in a chase mode. And Roglic has been delayed. And we uh, can only presume that that's something to do with... Uh, did he pick up a puncture? Was he part of that? Uh, that is uh, a little kerfuffle a little while ago. Primus Roglic on his own. Wow. Time, well, time to put the hammer down up front. Who knows whether they will be minded to try and take advantage. Uh, time to get a bottle on board inside uh, 20 kilometers to go for the riders up front, but they're a little bit behind. They're indeed several kilometers behind. So he's outside 20 to go, though. There, I'd be comfortable enough that he's within his rights to take on a bottle. Yep, not a problem there. And he's just riding himself up into the figures. That or they've put a barrage up. 
I have to see if the uh, the vehicles are there. The commissaire sometimes will put a barrage up in front of uh, the team cars. Well, he's a long way back, isn't he? Yeah, he's got a lot of team cars to get ahead, a lot of teams involved in there. And now the uh, the hammer goes down, the jaw is set. Amador, with what strength he's got, I think they're going to make it just as difficult as possible for Primus Roglic to get back in. Let's keep an eye on that. Is this... Uh, Turning the screws, he's in the vehicles now. He's 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 in the safety zone, and uh, one would imagine he's got the legs. I would, Im I can only imagine that it was a puncture or a mechanical. He's on his same bike. He's not the overall race leader, but uh, is it fair to be making a? Oh, you put the squeeze on. A rival? Yeah, put the squeeze on. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I know there'll be a flurry of activity on, on social media saying, oh, it's just not fair, the guy's suffered a little bit, he's had some sort of difficulty, uh, whether mechanical or... Don't, they didn't see any sign that he was on the deck. Now he's got the assistance of a team car that just kind of follow him up through the, through the group. Doesn't always uh, meet with the approval of the commissars. Great piece of uh, driving in the cavalcade, isn't it? There's not a lot of room in there. Gap to Roglic, well, there you go. He's got uh, about 20-odd seconds, should be able to... Get in there, maybe 34, 35 seconds for Primus Roglic to get back up. And this is not an ideal situation because he's using energy he could usefully uh, exploit on the climb itself this, to come. This is the trouble. It's it's at what cost. And, uh, well, he'll, he'll get himself back up OK there, you can see. But uh, still unclear as to what exactly it was that happened. Yeah, I need to find out exactly why Primus Roglic was out the back of the peloton. Well, one little banana skin averted. You don't get through three weeks of bike racing. Well, it's coming up on the on the computer screen. Mechanical problems. Well, not sure exactly what, but uh, there we go. He's back, and uh, but at what cost? Average speed for over five hours of bike racing is uh, pro well, approaching 41 kilometers an hour. It's not a bad effort from two riders with the climbs that they faced in the back end. Disaster averted, at least for the moment, for Primoz Roglic. He is back into the tail of this group, and he'll try and just uh, recover as best he can. But the way that this group is charging along, I don't think there's much recovery for anyone in there. But this, this goes to show why you need teammates for you, if you can. And uh, it's, ironically, it's not on the climb. It's between the climbs, though, and it's on the flat. And that's where, if uh, if there were one or two of the uh, Jumbo Visma riders there, they would have uh, obviously dropped back and helped, aided and abetted that to chase back. Well, it just shows you the, the, the hammer is down because a little bit of a crack there towards the back of the peloton. Not going to be any uh, difficulty for the likes of Roglic to close it, but a few riders are feeling the pinch. Let's get a little sight of riders coming back on or trying to get back on as we see Roglic moving. Is this the moment when he, when he suffered his mechanical? Yeah, we just see a yellow clad rider it's not a well I've just nice scenic I've, image but yeah I saw him on on a bike with with a number on and as, when I said well he's, he's still on his same bike because there was a number there I've got a report he's actually number 177 on the, on the bike which if, if that's the case that's Anton Tolhook's bike so I'm wondering if he did have a teammate with him and he actually had to swap bikes exchange bikes that's not ideal Anton Tolhook is not a big guy now neither is Primoz Roglic but uh, my expectation, although I'd have to get the full statistics, is that Antoine Tolhuk is probably a little bit shorter than Primus Roglic, in which case, Possibly, I mean, yeah. the, the satellite is not going to be optimum one way or another. It's, it's never ideal, so uh, let's have a look. I suppose if you do have to get a bike from a teammate, you want you one go. that's shorter, and it's a good call. Tolhuk uh, waiting for a team car as his team leader goes up front. Solid job done by Tolhuk to be there. That's why he is in that situation. The final push to the line for you two up front now. Movistar putting putting the speed into the front of this group. And, uh, well, it, we'll have to watch this uh, this time gap, but a big lead out to the foot of this climb is part of that because they they will now know that Roglic is uh, is not on his own bike, possibly that, or maybe this would have been the plan anyway. Yeah, there is Roglic slap bang in the middle. Let's put him in a, under a little bit of pressure and see what happens. Domenico Pozzavivo sits on the wheel of the rider in yellow, Primus Roglic, second overall, starting the day. Remember, just seven seconds down on Richard Carapaz, the man in the pink, as things currently stand. And Roglic picks up the wheel of Vincenzo Nibali. So he's in that uh, Bahrain Merida sandwich. 
And Carapaz just sits a little bit further up the line, maybe four or five wheels further up. Mitchell and Scott look to try and present Simon Yates, who we haven't seen so much of in the last 20k or so, as he resets and plans for another assault. Tried his luck on the Sormano. Overall race leader on the front of the group. Surprised to see that? Well, I am quite surprised, but he's obviously feeling good and wanting to put pressure on everybody else at this point. If he can knock one or two of the uh, the GC riders out, but he doesn't do a big turn, does he? Just enough. Obviously feeling good as Pozzavivo now moves up. Is this for Vincenzo Nibali? Yeah, he's Looks going to like set it. that. Yeah, it's not an attack. This is to set the tempo. Meanwhile, Vincenzo Nibali moves around the road, followed by Carapaz, Roglic, and now it's an opportunity perhaps for Formolo to go. And uh, we see Miguel Angel Lopez just shaping to move. So you've got Pozzavivo for the Bahrain Merida squad and for Vincenzo Nibali just setting the agenda on the front of this group. Formolo picks it up. The attack comes from Nibali. Here comes the shark. Immediately Carapaz is all over that one. Nibali goes, and he knows these roads and he's been waiting and waiting and waiting and Vincenzo Nibali has launched to the great excitement of everybody in Italy right now as uh, Formolo tries to cover it, not able to. Primus Roglic in standard form is going to just try and squeeze his way back on. Roglic there and then Landa on the wheel and then it looks like uh, Micah in the wheel. Well, this is uh, an important attack here, bearing in mind the descent to come. This is huge here from Vincenzo Nibali. So Vincenzo Nibali launches to try and get across, perhaps to Simon Yates and Hugh Carthy further up and still with an advantage of approaching two minutes are your uh, two leaders. They've been out front all day. We're inside 10 kilometers remaining on this 15th stage of the Giro d'Italia. And now Vincenzo Nibali, for the first time, has put a little bit of distance between himself and Primoz Roglic. There's got to be now about, what, 40, 50 meters between himself and Roglic. That's the first time they've been separated separated by that much in the entire Giro d'Italia. Carapaz, no apparent difficulty covering that one. The overall race leader in fine form. Well, here goes Nibali again. Vincenzo Nibali launches. Can Carapaz cover it this time? Yates is feeling the pinch a little bit. And Vincenzo Nibali launches with inside of the top of this final climb of stage 15 of Giro d'Italia. Carapaz immediately onto the wheel. Well, they're putting the battle down here and they know that Roglic is not on his home bike. How much of a disadvantage is that? Well, we'll find out, I'm sure. But As we race down towards the, the lakefront here in Como, and Catania and uh, Carapaz, I should say, all the season, that they need to be ever mindful of oh, problem no. for Roglic. Roglic has hit some sort of difficulty. That could be key. Has he been off his bike? Primus Roglic gets back on and he's on the wrong bike, and this is a crisis moment for Primus Roglic. Well, incredible. Oh, and he just nearly tick clips there again. Well, let's get a look at this again. He's off the bike against the arm cone. We saw what happened to Jan Bakelance in last year's Tour of Lombardy, and Roglic, well, he'll be relieved that he didn't fly off the side of the mountain there. Back on his bike, clips in as quick as he can, and Primoz Roglic is a lucky, lucky man, still in this bike race, but now an ex expanded difference between himself and the others. Well, he's losing time hand over fist now. It is, if there's a problem with that bike, he's got absolutely no chance of getting one from the team car, because that's going to be way behind him. He's going to have to suck it and see and carry on on this. Showing at 21 seconds between himself and uh, Vincenzo Nibali, who throws his bike off this. Well, there's the overall situation with an expanded and extended advantage now for Richard Carabaz at the front. 47 seconds to the good, Roglic limits the damage. Vincenzo Nibali now, 147 back, is just within a minute of Roglic. Oh, and behind, we got Angel Lopez! Lopez off his bike, Jan Hurt trying to assist him, and Jan Hurt is quite a bit taller. Have they changed bikes as we try and pick up the numbers? Th there's a baseball cap in the road. Don't tell me someone has run out in front of them. Please don't tell me that's happened. Oh, well, Lopez on the wrong side of the bike, trying to put the chain on. I think that is his own road bike, so Miguel Angel Lopez in pursuit. Let's pick up this. It is. It's a... Oh, the a... camera just goes away, but I think it gave us enough information to know that that spectator... Well, there you go, there's a moment of impetuosity. And... He, uh, well, that's why the baseball cap's on the floor. 